Alright, we got one coming in. Oh my gosh, he just, he just ate it. Alright, alright, alright. Turn this heater off. You can still see him just kind of sitting there. I'm going to turn the GoPro on. Okay, we got him. <laughs> I don't think he's a real big one. <laughs> We're going to be able to see him here in a second. Oh, he's still got some life. There he goes. <laughs> Too much fun. You know, he is easily not the biggest fish we have seen today. But uh, he's right here at the hole now. Don't get in my camera, little guy. They are just too much fun to jig. Especially when you can just kind of sit inside your shack like this. Oh, he's going to make one more little run here. You know, I'm not fishing with super heavy line because there has been some walleyes kind of out here in the area. Oh, he's stuck. We got to get him unstuck here. Oh, he's going to come up the other hole. It's all right. <laughs> there we go. On the jig rod. All right, what's going on, guys? We are back with another video. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different. You know, it's not really focused on one type of fishing in general, um, but whenever I post a lot of underwater footage, we always get asked a ton about what kind of cameras we're using. Is the camera useful? And how do you video record with an underwater camera? So we're going to kind of discuss all those different things today, answer all those questions, and kind of what I think about it. Um, and we're kind of going to start with, uh, you know, when is an underwater camera useful? For as many YouTube videos as I do, I absolutely hate filming. It slows the process down. I got to be thinking about setting tripods up, setting cameras up. Is the mic on, you know, while I'm kind of hole hopping around or buzzing around at a boat. So, you know, I don't like setting underwater cameras up. Uh, but there are certain times where they are definitely very useful, you know, and if you're looking to purchase an underwater camera, if you're wondering how useful they are, um, you know, that's kind of the first thing we want to talk about. So there's kind of two main things that you would use an underwater camera for. One is obviously looking at structure. Number two is obviously looking at fish. And, um, you know, they're, they're definitely obviously useful for both. Number one, looking at structure. When are you using this? Well, most of the time for me, um, one of the biggest learning curves I ever had was kind of when side imaging first started coming out and getting good. This was like the Gen 1 Helix stuff and uh, probably, you know, four or five years, six years ago maybe now. Um, I mounted an underwater camera right next to my side imaging unit in the boat. And whenever I would see something I wasn't sure it was, um, I would basically waypoint it, drive over to it, and look at it with the underwater camera, whether that was a weed edge, whether I was wondering if this was thick weeds or you know slim weeds, or if I saw a pot of fish and I was like, are those smallmouth, are those walleyes, you know, what are those? Um, that was a huge, quick learning curve for me, because I quickly, you know, this is the only way you surely, truly know what you're looking at down there. So that really put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together for me. I could say, okay, that's that. This is what this looks like. This is what this looks like. Um, so it was very quick to kind of connect the dots with an underwater camera in the boat. Now, using one on the ice, um, it's a lot of the same stuff. Now, obviously, ice fishing, we're a little bit less mobile, and it's a little bit more of a, you know, we want to see what's directly around us scenario. Um, so a lot of times, like if we pull up on a rock comp and we're like, where's the biggest chunk of rock on this spot? Drop the underwater camera down and say, okay, well, this is small gravel here. Let's go a little bit farther on top and see if we find some big stuff. Or, you know, like let's say you're out of Mille Lacs and you want to find that deep gravel to sand transition. Or it's great for that. Just drill a big line of holes. You might be gravel, gravel, sand, and split the difference and realize you're right in the transition. So these are things that really an underwater camera is the only thing that is effective at showing you this, right? Um, unless you're in a boat and you've done a ton of side imaging work, you know what you're looking at. But um, the other spot we've been using this a ton is for like smallmouth, like finding fish cribs. You know, you drop your flasher down and uh, you see obviously a whole bunch of red stacked off the bottom. And you're like, are we right on top of this crib or are we right on the edge? Is there more cribs over here? What's going on here? So it does a great job of showing us the lay of land, showing us exactly where we are, right? It's perfect for that. Um, the other scenario is obviously for fishing very shallow like weed scenarios, especially this time of year for like panfish or crappies. Let's say you're seeing a whole bunch of fish in the graph, nothing's really biting. You drop this down, you say, oh, these are crappies, we're just not catching them. Or, oh, these are a lot of very small bluegills, time to move on. Um, does a great job of like finding weed edges, right? So if you're uh, uh, not even weed edges, let's say thick pods of weed. So one bite that happens a lot very late in the season like this is you're looking for like thick milfoil growth in some of these bigger bays with sparse weeds. 
So it does a great job of, you know, you punch a bunch of holes, drop the camera around, spin it around, you're like, oh, there's a big tuft of milfoil over here. This is gonna be a great spot to set off of for crappies, right? Um, so it does a great job of showing you stuff like this. Now, on the average day, let's say I go out of my favorite lake, um, you know, I know everything that's around me. I don't necessarily use the camera a lot then, unless I'm in a scenario where it's beneficial to use the camera then, which would be like, let's say, smallmouth fishing. It does a great job for smallmouth fishing, and you don't even use a graph if you're using the underwater camera for smallmouth fishing, for the simple fact that you can see what's going on, you see the fish come right up to you, and uh, typically these fish bite very soft, or your interactions with that fish are very crucial, right? When walleyes are jacked up and I got walleyes flying all over, you know, I don't need to use the underwater camera because I can read that graph, tell when they're hot. But a lot of times, smallmouth, the way they come in, it's just this real slow creep. And if you pull that bait away from them, they might not bite it quite as much, right? So interacting with a fish when you can see what's going on is a lot more beneficial sometimes. Or another scenario is obviously we're fishing for very spooky fish in shallow water like crappies or bluegills. Well, this does a great job of sorting out the small ones because you can look at them and be like, oh, we don't want that one. We want this one, right? Um, so it does a great job of that too. Is that one in the corner? Right there? Yeah. Fucked up. Fucked up! That is a much better small mold there. It's a lot bigger than the last one. So. Yeah. He's out of it. He's in the hole. Oh yeah, look at that fish. Oh nice! Oh, nice bronze bag. Super cool, a little acne jigs just pinched right there on the top of the mall. Now, the other part of this video is obviously what kind of camera you use and how do you video record stuff like that. Now, the camera I've been using, I've used several Markhams before, and this is 100% my favorite one. This is the Markham Quest 1080 HD. Um, this camera has been great for me, um, it's very clear. Now, I fish a lot of very clear lakes. Um, but even at depths like uh, you know 30 feet of water, we're seeing crystal clear. There's not a, light, a lot of light penetration down there. We can see everything we want to see, whether that's smallmouth or bait, what the structure is, rock stuff like that. It does a great job um, even in these in these deep waters. So I've been very impressed with this um, overall. I've been fishing this for the last couple months now, and uh, it's been great. We haven't had any issue with battery running this thing all day. Um, it's just been a solid unit so far, and it packs up real nice. Um, we don't have any kind of bulky carrying cases. You basically just take this, fold this down like this. I throw it right in the back rack on my four-wheeler, and I'm good to go. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's the camera we use, and I'll kind of link all this stuff down below as we kind of walk through the process here. But if you want to video record, which is super cool, because um, obviously it lets you get home, jog back through everything, look at it, see what happened, you know. Um, it's very cool, and especially if you're making YouTube videos, uh, which a lot of the people that message me are wanting to do. Um, video recording is a pretty cool deal, and it's not complicated at all on these units. Basically what you need, is you need this Aver Media. This is like a video game recording um, device. And uh, it's pretty simple. Like I said, I'll go ahead and step-by-step step link all this stuff down below. The next thing you do need, which actually comes with this, I believe, is an HDMI cord. Um, this is just a real short one, obviously, because I don't need a real long one for this. Then you're gonna need a micro SD card that goes in the back, right? Um, I run like a 128 gig one. Uh, something that gives you a lot of runtime, obviously, without having to swap chips out all the time. Is, is definitely nice to have. So basically all you're doing is you're taking this and you're plugging it in to the video out. There's obviously only one HDMI output on this unit and we're plugging this directly in to here. And uh, this is the video out and the video in is obviously in uh, the, vi the video recorder right here. So there's no power to this unit. It will not power itself. So what you need is some kind of power bank something like this. Um, this one I'll go ahead and link it down below, but it also comes with the power cord here. And all I'm gonna do is plug this into the device. So now what we have is we have power to the unit, right? So my unit's all powered on. Now I'm gonna do, this light's gonna be blue. I'm gonna click it. Oh, I don't think I got it there. I'm gonna click it and it's gonna start pulsating red. This lets me know that I'm recording. And now I'm recording everything that comes off of my underwater camera. So it's really that simple. Basically, the, the, all the things you need, you need this video game recording device, which is this red box, link it below, you need an HDMI cord, and then you need a power bank, you simply plug it in, hit record, and you're rolling. So pretty easy system there. Um, you know, I, 
I actually, it kind of changes the way you fish. Like if you have a day, if I have a day off and I'm not going to go super hardcore and run around the lake and fish a million things, um, it opens up a lot of windows just because it's so fun to obviously stare at an underwater camera, watch how fish interact with you. It obviously adds something that no other piece of fishing equipment can, especially in ice fishing that you can just sit down there and stare at the fish. So um, it's pretty cool and uh, definitely look for a whole bunch more footage from this this summer. I'm really looking forward to kind of doing like a spot on the spot. So much of my stuff relies on showing you guys what the hummingbird looks like, side imaging, down imaging, sonar, that I kind of want in every video, I kind of want to show you guys like, okay, you know, here's the fish we caught, here's where we caught them, and show you what it looks like down there. It's kind of a um, help you guys along the process to say like, oh, that looks like a spot that I fish out on this lake and uh, go try it there. So uh, hopefully this is useful for you guys. Hopefully this answered a lot of the questions that you guys have been asking us. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, we're going fishing in a little bit to hopefully film another video. We still have a ton of ice up here in northern Wisconsin and we will for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks.